This video is going to walk you through some of the basic text functions you should be comfortable with inside of Excel. This is using the file 2A, which is available for download so you can follow along. I'm going to walk through a couple of the basic functions here, and then at the end you should go ahead and use the attached file to go ahead and try it out yourself. Simply watching the video isn't enough. You have to actually practice it yourself as well for the stuff to stick. But let's start at the beginning. So first off, for text functions, there's a couple of key ones you're going to want to be very comfortable with. Some of them are really straightforward. So for example, we have the len function. If you look at the len function, all it does is take in a single reference or piece of text and then return the length of how many letters are in that word. So in this example, I'm looking at C3, which is currently holding ABC. If I type something else in, and push enter, you'll see that len returns a different length. Now my characters are 14 rather than three. The other thing the len function can do is instead of using a reference, I can go ahead and directly type something in. The key thing here is that it has to have quotes. If there's no quotes around this, then Excel gets confused and thinks that it's a reference or name or function or something like that. Putting quotes around it makes it safe to use. Now that I hit enter, you'll see that len changes from looking at cell C3 to looking at the text something, and it tells me the length of that. The next couple of functions are very similar. It's called left and right. They're gonna take a certain number of characters from the left side of a function, the left side of a string or the right side of a string. So let's look at the example here. So in the function here, I've got right the first argument or parameter we see is the kind of text I'm going to be looking at. So in this case, I'm looking at C6, which has the word starting inside of it. The second argument or parameter you see here in red shows how many characters or letters to take off of that. In this case, I want four. So it takes the first four off, which returns T-I-N-G. Just like the previous one, I can also use direct numbers here. So I can say to take the right one character off, and now it just returns the G. Similarly, I can replace the reference with the word, and now it's going to take the right one letter off of word, like so. One thing to be careful about here is that if there's a space, the function still works, but you won't actually see anything in the field. So now this is five characters long, W-O-R-D, and then a space symbol. Now when I hit enter, it looks like it's actually empty, but actually there's a space inside of there. So just be careful if you're looking at it and it seems broken to make sure there's not a space or other character. Left is the exact same way. We're going to go ahead and grab a certain number of characters off the left-hand side of a cell or text string. Upper and lower are also very simple. They just simply take text and change it into the upper or lowercase versions. So in this case, I'm going into cell C16 to get A, B, C in caps, and the lower function changes it from an uppercase to a lowercase. If I try to type in something else, like this, you'll see it goes ahead and grabs all the uppercase and changes it. Same thing with upper. It's going to take all the text I give it and change it into uppercase. The last piece, which is important to understand, is concatenate. Concatenate can be written in two different ways. The first way it can be written is with a function actually called concatenate. Some of the newer versions of Excel actually call this concat instead of concatenate. I recommend though that you practice using the ampersand symbol instead. Ampersand can be found above the, above the seven character on your keyboard. When you look at the ampersand character, you should pretty much view it like a plus symbol just like addition. So for example here, I say to take cell C20 and join it with the text that is inside of the quotes and then join it with whatever content is inside of C19. And it takes all of those and puts them together. Now while we're talking about this, let me show you another important idea related to the ampersand. <clears throat> A lot of times I see people who are not very comfortable with Excel use functions that aren't really necessary. So for example, you already know inside of Excel you can add two numbers, like so. Now when I add two numbers, Excel goes ahead and adds one and two together and gives you the result, which is three. However, some people are very comfortable with sum and they tend to overuse it. 
sum takes a range of numbers and adds them together. However, some people confuse these two concepts together. They'll do 1 plus 2 plus 3 and then give the whole thing to sum. This doesn't actually do anything. Sum is completely redundant here because the math is already happening. Basically what's going to happen is that Excel will add the 1 to the 2 to the 3 and get 6. Then it's going to give 6 to the sum function, which just takes 6 and can't add anything to it, and just gives us 6 as a result. So try not to get in the habit of using both a function and the actual math operator. The same thing applies. The same thing, sorry, get out of that. The same thing also applies to text. If I've got two words that I want to join, say I have left and I have right. The ampersand is going to take the two of them together and give me left, right. I could write the same exact thing with concatenate. With concatenate, I can do left and I can do right. But notice here how I have each piece is completely separate. This piece is all right here, then there's a comma, and there's a second piece. So concatenate will get two different pieces, left and right, and it'll join them together. What we don't want to do is similar to the sum function. We don't want to do concatenate and the ampersand together because, again, it's redundant. So it would be kind of silly to write concatenate left ampersand right because Excel is going to join left and right together here and then have a single word which then gets passed into concatenate, which does nothing because it only has one thing being added. So it's not really wrong, it's just sort of a waste of time to type out all this extra stuff. So in general, I recommend for concatenate to use just the ampersand signal symbol and treat it like a plus. Now that being said, it's not a plus. So if I say add left to right, Excel has trouble with that and it gives me the value error. The value error just means that Excel tried to treat it like a number and it couldn't treat it like a number. So be careful and make sure you use the ampersand. Now you can join words and numbers together. If I do a word left, and a number, what Excel will do is it'll try and treat it like whatever the data type is. Because this is looking at data types of text, it's going to join zero and left together. And now I have left zero. But if again, if I try to do the plus, it gives me a value error because it can't convert this into a number that it can add to that. Let's go back to string functions. So just to finish the example here, we have C20, the word U, and C19. An important thing here to notice is that there are spaces in it. See how there's a space in front of the word U and after U? Without that space inside the quotes, Excel will not put anything between the two words. So if we look at our example here, you see we've got left and we have right, and it's being squished together. If I want a space in the middle, I'd actually put a space in. The space has to be inside of the quotes, like so. If I don't put the space inside of the quotes but outside, Excel doesn't really care. It's going to leave out all those extra spaces and won't have any effect on what actually happens. Instead, put it inside of the quotes. Now you could also write it in a more complicated way, I see students do this sometimes, of this. Now this will work. It takes the word left, it takes the space, and it takes the word right and puts them together. But it's just extra typing you don't really need. If you can, just stick the whole thing together, keeping the space inside of the quotes or next to the word. And typically what you'll see here is that you'll have all the words that you want in quotes, and then at some point you'll have a reference, like A1, and that'll join whatever is in cell A1 with left and a space, like so. Okay, so this is a good chance to go ahead and take a break from the video and try actually solving some problems. Work on the ones that are down here and see how far you can get. When you're done, unpause and we'll keep on talking about the next section. Okay, now that you've done the, the initial practice, talk about a couple more complex text functions. The next set are all about how to tweak words and pieces of inside of words. The first one here is called find. Find is pretty straightforward. It has two arguments or parameters. The first thing is B, what it's trying to find, and the second thing is what's it trying to find inside of. So if you see in my function, 
I'm looking for B inside of C46, and I can find it. That's why it gives me two as the result. A would be the first character, B would be the second character, C would be the third character. I can tweak it and ask for something else. Maybe I want to look for C. Then it should change to give me three. But you notice how in this case it doesn't actually find it? That's because it's case sensitive. That means that it can't find a uppercase C when you're looking for a lowercase C and vice versa. If you want to make sure you find it, you might find this be a good chance to use the upper or lower. If I'm looking for C and I want to find either upper or lower, I'll wrap this like so. Now what happens is that the lower function is going to go into C46, turn it all into lowercase, lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c. Then it's going to look inside of that result to find the lowercase c. And now whether it's upper or lower, it'll be able to find it. And if I change this to a lowercase, you'll see that it still works. Replace is more complex. This is a function that can do a lot of things depending upon the parameters you give it. Basically the way to think through it is that it's going to start with some text in the first parameter. At a certain position, it's going to start doing something. So this one says start at position two. Then it's going to take some text out. In this case, I told it to take out one piece of text or one letter and then put something new in its place. So it seems kind of complicated here, but basically you're going into a word, telling where to start, how much to take out, and, how much, and what to, exactly to put back in. Another function that kind of does the same thing, but it's a lot easier to use, is substitute. Substitute is a good one that I frequently will put on exams or quizzes. Substitute looks at a certain word. So in this case, I'm looking at the word that's in cell C55. Then it's going to find something, like B, and replace it with something else, in this case, a hyphen. I can have a long text, like so, in which case you can see that the one B has been replaced with multiple Bs, or I can even just put simple quotes next to it. By putting quotes next to it, it basically tells the Excel interpreter to take all the Bs out and replace them with nothing, and now I just have AC. Mid is also another useful function. This one is kind of a combination of left and right together. So in this, I start with a certain word. I'm going to start with a certain number inside of a word, and then I'm going to return. Now, if you get confused about any of these, it's helpful to be able to look at the help functions. So for example, I might click on the mid link here, and Excel help will open up and it'll give me an idea of what mid actually does. If you scroll down, it'll explain what each syntax piece does, and then the bottom usually will have a few examples for you as well. All right, this is a good chance to stop and go ahead and work on the next set of problems. When you're done, you'll have done most of the string functions that we'll play with inside the course.